Hey yo, Hudson here with Planet 4 Gaming. I'm flying the Focke-Wulf 190A8. Um, this is the 190 that bridges the gap between the A5 and the Doras. And it's placed at the awkward battle rating of 5.3 in the middle of Tier 4, which means it'll see late Tier 3 planes and the best uh, props the game has to offer at 6.3. So... Does it do its job all that well there? Uh, maybe not, but it's still a fun plane and I will be discussing that in this video. So, uh, as usual for Falk Wolves, you'd be expecting to fly this plane uh, in the boom and zoom fashion. And it can kind of do that. It half does that. It gets the boom part down, but not really the zoom. Um, what I mean by that is it has an excellent uh, dive speed and great control in a dive at high speed. It can uh, reach speeds in excess of 800 kilometers per hour, which is about as good as it gets for a prop. Um, but unfortunately, it does not have a very good energy retention. So as you're making your escape after your uh, first pass, it's going to lose speed very quick whether you are going in a straight line or in a steady climb so in that sense it is not all that great especially compared to the Doras and planes like that, the Tempest, whatever um, Mustang too <laughs> uh, when it comes to climb rate it is not very good either um, kind of poor in fact Top speed is not great either. Um, yeah. Uh, its handling is what you'd expect from a Focke Wolf. It has an excellent roll rate and not a very good turn time at low speeds, but once you get your speed up, you start being more competitive with the planes you're going up against. Um, and finally, it has a very good armament, which is pretty much this plane's saving grace. Um, it has four MG-151s, which is amazing, and two 50 cals that don't do anything. But about those 151s, you get them right at the start, no gun pods needed, they're right there in the wings, they don't cause drag or anything, and they do excellent damage. Uh, this is the best tier 4 Focke Wolf in the game when it comes to taking out bombers and just uh, doing damage in general. Um, you can't beat 4 MG-151s. Uh, so yeah, there is that. And we'll be seeing plenty of what those guns can do and what this plane is capable of throughout this video. We will go to a full game right now. Okay, here we are on Norway. My usual strategy when I play on this map is to climb out to the left hand side over the docks and then cut towards the enemy spawn, hopefully intercept some bombers or their escorts which are heading towards the docks to go for the bombing points. And that's what's happened here. Uh, there's a B-25 heading in that direction. He goes to make a head on with my teammate which leaves him vulnerable to me. I get a really kind of a nick on his tail there, but that's enough. Uh, the cannons do their job and knock off uh, looks like his elevators or a flap maybe. And he's heading into the ocean. <laughs> There's no pulling out of this and crashes right there. And I knew ahead of time because I saw the uh, score thing in the bottom right. Um, there's an A-20 down there somewhere. It was bombing our destroyers, so I'm looking for him now, and there he is. Uh, just kind of a bit of a lucky thing there, but it was because I was paying attention and knew what was going on. Um, so that's an easy kill coming up here. Long burst, adjust my lead wall, pulling down the trigger. There's plenty of ammo to waste, and that uh, takes him out pretty quick. So now I've got no idea what's going on. Um, I'm just going to climb towards my guy's center of the map, and hopefully there should be some fighters around there. Um, 
I can see three guys chasing that Spitfire, but I'm not going to join them. They appear to have it under control. I mean, there's three of them on that guy. Spoiler alert, they do not have it under control. Um, but I still feel like I made the right call uh, orbiting above, just providing them cover. Because pretty soon here, yep, two P-51s coming in to join the party. And it's up to me to kind of defend my teammates who are all at low altitude. Gonna dive on this guy, but he's got too much speed built up. He was in a dive as well. So I'm gonna have to wait for him to maneuver to actually get a decent shot. Spitfire is still alive, by the way. Still kicking. And I'm gonna try and take a shot here, but I just do not get the best aim. And he was doing a pretty good job of evading. Two Mustangs not worrying about me. That is their biggest mistake. Both of them are on the same guy. Line up on the first one, not enough lead. Luckily the second one is right in the perfect spot and I just blow them away in a quick burst. That is the power of four 151s with uh, air target belts. Uh, pretty much vaporize any fighter with uh, a decent enough shot. Spitfire still alive. Not fucking dead yet, he is the Rasputin of the air, but no more. I'm able to put him out of his misery, clip off his wing, and that's him gone. And the other P-51 went down at some point in the middle of that, uh, fracas. I will never use that word again. <laughs> and it's just one P-51 left at, low, at high altitude, very high altitude, above our entire team. And I'm going to have to do some climbing. I'll, I'll do a quick cut here so you don't have to see all the boring details. But he did run for about five minutes, maybe a bit more. But it wasn't too bad. It wasn't the typical boring P-51 pilot that runs the entire game trying to run the tickets out. And once he reaches about 5,000 meters edge of the map, he decides to turn around and go into a head-on with my 190 teammate up there, which is what you're seeing now. And there's the head-on. Not any real exchange. <laughs> I don't think anyone hit anybody there. But now he's going to go head-on with me big mistake. I know what the fuck I'm doing. Big long burst. Hits him right dead center. He's on fire. And that's all for him. And that'll finish off the game. Very good game for me. Ace in a day. Can't uh, ask for much better than that. Um, you just gotta play this plane smart. Um, be a little bit more cautious than you would if you were flying a more competitive plane, and you can do well. It has the capability. Um, it's just not the best plane that ever was. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll do it. Okay, uh, this game is on Roar. Not as, uh, impressive a game as the last one, but I had fun, so I figured why not upload it. And that's what I'm doing. Um, start of the match, didn't even have to climb. This bow fighter decided he was gonna climb after my teammate, and it kinda messed up his attack on me, and got an easy kill there. He was moving very slow, and just a very easy target. Um, and after that, I ended up spotting a P-51 down below. Yeah, there he is. I don't know if I knew he was there beforehand or not, but figured it out one way or the other. And just an easy diving pass. He decides to climb up and go after my teammate, which makes him an easy, even easier target than the bow fighter. First shot takes off his elevator, second shot blows him to pieces, and that's two kills within within a minute. I don't know how long that was, but very easy. Apparently the U.S. team's strategy this game is to make it as easy for me to win as possible. 
It's kind of unusual, but hey, I don't judge. Um, whatever you think works. <laughs> that Tiger Cat pilot, by the way, is the only good player on their team. He actually knows what he's doing, and what, which is rare enough for a Tiger Cat pilot, but yeah, he has my respect. Um, not an easy plane to really dominate and do well in. It's easy to run and avoid getting killed, sure, but I mean, it's a very big, heavy plane. Um, usually very easy for me to evade um, a plane that heavy. Um, just hard to aim well with that thing, but he does a good job. Hats off to you, mine crack. <laughs> also a very good uh, username. But he goes into a pass there. Um, I'm able to dodge fairly easily because I just know he's coming. And I had noticed that P-51 earlier. I wasn't going to dive on him right away on account of the F-7F pilot. I didn't want to get caught off guard, but as he makes that pass, I see my opportunity. Uh, P-51 is escaping from my teammate. Take a good long-range shot, and he's history. And what you uh, saw there was just a good example of restraint and putting some forethought into your actions. I had seen that P-51 getting away from my teammate at lower altitude for a few seconds, 30 seconds or whatever, but I knew that the F-7F was coming, and I knew the P-51 was coming towards me, so I did the head-on with the F-7F, d dodging out of the way. If I had seen a good opportunity for a shot on him, I would have taken it, but really I, there wasn't. I mean, he, he knew what he was doing, and he's got a plane with some very good firepower. So, dodged him. When he made it past, P-51 is right underneath me. Perfect opportunity to dive in and just take the kill. And that is what it's about. Anyway, I come in to help out my teammates with that Bearcat, but he just gets right underneath and I'm not able to pull enough lead, especially with a down, downward pitch. That's a hard shot to take in this plane. But I did get him to evade, and that made an easy kill for my friends down there, and that's good enough for me. So, Minecrack has made it to his base, but no help for him. My teammate takes him out, and that'll finish the game. Um, yeah, he was a very good F7F pilot. I cannot repeat this enough. He got two kills on a useless team, and really gave us some trouble there or at least as best as he could. So, yeah. That's all I gotta say about him. Just gonna strafe some AAA on the runway for a few extra measly research points, and that's the end of the game. So, what did we learn here today? Um, although I did get two great games, the F... FW-190A8 is not a great plane. It is a good plane, a solid plane, depending on how you look at it, but it's just not great. It's at the 5.3 battle rating. Up one level to the 5.7, you get planes like the Tempest, you get the Doras, you get, um, I think the first Bearcat, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, though. You get some Griffin Spitfires. Those planes are all leagues ahead of <laughs> the A8. This is really just a tier 3 Focke Wolf with two extra good guns. And other than that, it, it just performs like an A5. So I have fun with it, but maybe not everyone will. Uh, it did take some time for me to let this plane grow on me. At first, I basically hated it. Um, but yeah, it did grow on me, and I enjoy flying it now. Um, when you're flying it, all you need to know is that you got to play more cautious than you would with a plane like the Dora, anything more competitive. Climb to the side, try to get above your enemies, or at least in a position where you're, you're not at the disadvantage. When you've got a lot of teammates around, you can support your teammates, they can support you. 
and you should not have too much trouble. But if you do get in trouble, there's a guy on your six. Your first um, priority should be to dive towards your teammates. It has a very good dive speed, um, very good control on a dive. It won't ring wing rip easily. Um, you should be able to get away that way. If that's not an option, you're on the deck to begin with, moving slowly. Your best bet is to use your roll rate to get the enemy to overshoot. But honestly, at this point, you're probably dead. So, um, yeah, that's your last resort, is what I'm saying. And with the guns, you want to use the stealth, uh, not stealth, air target belts for the 151, and I started using stealth belts for the machine guns. Um, this isn't because of damage or anything, it's just I wanted less clutter with the tracers, and I didn't want them interfering with my aim, seeing as how they have different ballistics and all that. Um, I'm not totally sure if that helps yet or not, I haven't used it too much, but it makes sense. So, do whatever you want there. And that should be it. Any questions, think something I didn't cover, leave a comment, and I'll do my best to answer it. But until then, this has been Hudson with P4G. Thank you for watching, and get the fuck out of here.